Was this a test of our faith? And what that means is feel what we're feeling because God has made a way. But believers must be reminded that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, choir. Thank you. You know, some, you know, sometimes you get stuck with situations and circumstance and you wonder why. You can't find a reason. You didn't notice this morning that I got stuck when I was doing the rededication ceremony. Stuck on what? What did I get stuck on? What did I get stuck on? I get stuck on, have you received Jesus Christ the Savior? I just couldn't move off it. And the choir sang, take me back to that place. Take me back to that memory. Take me back to that situation. God was in it. I didn't make any mistake, but I didn't realize what was happening. God wants us to go back to the beginning to assess our situation, to assess your walk with him and his walk with you. We bless God. Your, the congregation is excited today. Excited because we are celebrating 25 years. And my friends, if over 25 years or whatever years you have spent with us, you have not yet understood the way to Jesus Christ, the way to walk by faith, then you are in real trouble. We can't do any more. We can't do any better. We have been saying it all this time. And if you don't feel it, then you have to go back to Calvary. Thank you, my friends, this morning for the inspiration. Thank you, choir, for the inspiration and the confirmation that I was right to ask you. First question, which wasn't on the paper, shouldn't have been on the paper. It's a wrong paper, but right question. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, especially the leaders of the church. Because if one of you has not accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, you need to go back to Calvary. It's important. This morning, friends, we shall speak on the topic ability versus attitude. Ability versus attitude. St. Matthew 25, the passage that was read. First of all, ability. Jesus told a parable about an investor. Distributing talents to his servants, in which he pointed out two qualities of a servant leader. He's distributing talents, money. And Jesus pointed out two qualities of a servant leader. God 
distributes abilities. Listen to this statement. God distributes abilities. God distributes to us abilities. But we must display attitude. God gives us abilities. Attitude must come from us. It's not God. God distributes abilities. You display attitudes. Our relationship with God or with the human being is determined by how we use our ability and the attitude we display among our fellow men. God distributes abilities. We display attitude toward our fellow men and put both together then we have the Christian life. Christian life is ability and attitude come together. Only an individual who truly experiences and reciprocates the love of God can be assured of the presence of God with him. Only, only an individual who receives and distributes the love of God can be assured of God's presence with him. So as we reflect on the past, as we are taken back to the past, as we look on where we are, we must ask, what have we done with our ability and how have we displayed attitude? One can destroy the other. Very many times they are tremendous leaders, but their attitudes, not straight. Our attitudes, not straight. And all of us, all of us can err, all of us can make mistakes with regard to our attitude to people. That's the Bible. And so, we are considering our attitudes and ability today. God influences and empowers those who are transformed by him. God influences and empowers those who are transformed by him. So it does not matter your status or your class. God influences and empowers you if you are transformed by him. You see, my friends, we're not just, not just talking something. We don't just want you to feel good. When you are transformed by Jesus Christ, he influences you and he empowers you to go through all your problems. You can walk 25 years if God inspires you and influence, influences you. God empowers you. If, if God is in your vessel, it doesn't matter the pothole. You're going to make it. So while Jesus was on earth, his plan was to call and equip disciples. The first thing he did, because that was the nature of his mission. He, wasn't, he could do it alone, but he did not decide to do it alone. He wanted to involve people. He wanted to involve you. He wanted to involve Christ's way in the ministry of the word. He introduced talents, a sum of money. He used this parable in which he said, 
the man distributes money called talents in those days. And so, symbolizing, the talent symbolize the significance of provision, of money for the maintenance of his work. Jesus introduced a parable dealing with money because those who say church no need any money forgive me if I say I forgive you on the grounds of ignorance God no need any money God does not need any money but he introduced money what he, why did he introduce money the significance of money in his ministry and the fostering of his ministry. This ministry, no ministry can go on without money. We make no excuse to receive whatever money God gives us through you. We make no excuse, but we pray to God for wisdom to use it according to his spirit. The talents were given based on the owner's knowledge of the people's, his servants' abilities. Let me repeat that and think of it. The talents were given based on the owner's knowledge of the abilities of his servants. Because try as you may, all of us don't have the same ability. You could look pretty or Handsome, like the, the men of this church. But we don't have the same ability. That's God given. And this man was distributing the money. He knew, he knows, he knew the people. That some of them vary in their, their abilities. You see, my friends, the ability is to do business. Not every man who is handsome, but can, can have, does have the ability to do business. Some men are not businessmen. No condemnation to them. They're not businessmen. But they have talents. They may pray for businessmen. They may assist the businessman. And after the man, the leader plans the business, he works with the businessman. Because the business cannot be accomplished without businessman and worker. It doesn't matter. You can't, you can't make it alone. So the talents were given based on the owner's knowledge of their abilities and his wisdom in doing business. Some women can do business, but some women just know how to go to the mall. But they still are women, still doing what they know. The world is different and we are different. My friends, God is aware of each person's capabilities. God is aware of each one of us, our capabilities and how much resources we need to accomplish his work. Get to understand that man. People are fighting people for, for their ability, their talent and don't fight, keep on fighting. Stop, listen, look what you may have. So you may use what you have for the accomplishment of your task. Your problem may be the person, the other person. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. I want my, I want my child to be a doctor. I want, I want if you want your child to be a doctor and God leads you, go do so. But God may 
want the other person's child to be a shoemaker. Because you have to wear shoes. You see, there was once a time when in Jamaica the only person was teacher and doctor and lawyer. And maybe nurse. But everybody is important. God distributes abilities. And all abilities are from God. God is aware of our abilities. And he gives us the necessary equipping according to what he plans for you. Some of us have never put ourselves to the test in finding out what is our capability. Some of us don't do that. Don't find out what is your capability. We are busy finding out what is the other neighbor's child's capability. Rather than thinking about your capability. And so the master distributes abilities according to his knowledge. His knowledge. It's his money and his knowledge. It's not yours. You receive. You're the recipient, not the giver. When it is your money, you do what you want with your money. When it is your knowledge and ability and your God, your, your status, God does give you and direct you according to, accordingly. And you see, my friends, some of us are servants of God. And God equip us to direct you in his distribution of ability. Because of his knowledge, not even our knowledge. Sometimes you wonder, you, you wonder, you did not know this person by name, but you look on him or her and you know that she can do this, she can do that. It's God who transmits ability and he transmits it sometimes through some of us. While Jesus and Paul were on the Damascus road talking and you know what happened to, 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 to Paul on the Damascus road. But Jesus and him were talking. Paul asked Jesus what we should ask him. Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do? You know, my friends, God did not save you and just leave you to do everything for yourself. He doesn't do that. You should ask God who you should marry. You marry the wrong person or the right person. Man, last night I watched the family, what do you call this? Family question. Family feud. And one question was, what mistake did you make? And one of the answers was, marry the wrong person. <laughs> it can happen. You can choose the wrong career. Some people have chosen the wrong career and they are beating themselves over and over again. They will never be able to make it because you choose the wrong career. As a matter of fact, you should not choose the career. You should let the career choose you by asking God, Lord, what would you have me to do? God distributes abilities. So talents in this passage is used to symbolize the gifts, the abilities to heal, the abilities to heal. Not everybody can heal. And you can't just jump up and say, I am in the spirit, I am in the spirit, and so I can heal. 
can't do that. God is the architect. He's the one who plans. So, God gives you and I, give you and me abilities, abilities to heal, to sing, to pray, to teach, to act, to cook, to study, and understand. God gives you the ability according to his knowledge and your ability. So then, if you're going to be a seer, sincere and committed servant of Jesus Christ, you must know what you must do. Some people don't follow anybody. Some people not following anybody. I know what I know I want. I don't care. I am God calling me. Look, my friend, when God is leading you, you don't have to create much problem because cool. If you are fighting, you are fighting for somebody to understand and hear what you say. Maybe you are not right. You think it's a person, but maybe it's you. Wrong leader. And so the talents were given as God's method of communication and supply to his people. They are given as achievement to be used in your achievement of blessing from God. We have to fulfill our responsibilities. And so God equips us to fulfill our responsibilities to him because he's going to come back and check us to see how we have been doing. Failure to comply will result in our being a hindrance to our own success. Failure to comply to obey Jesus Christ will result in you being a hindrance to your own success. You see, my friends, we can be a problem to ourselves. We can be the biggest problem to ourselves. Blame, like I said last week, blame everybody not knowing that you are the problem. But you don't. We're not talking about that this morning. We are talking about how you can transform yourself, your condition, into being tremendous blessing of the Almighty God. Maybe in school, you may not be doing well. At work, you may not be doing well. Don't keep on fighting your boss. Ask him for five minutes and go in a corner and turn to Jesus Christ and say, Jesus, is it me or is it is the supervisor? It may be you. Lord, what will you have me to do? So then, my friends, man is in control of his own attitude. Man is in control of his own attitude. God made us to interact, made us as interactive beings. God made us as interactive beings. That means we can talk, we can laugh, and, and so on and so forth. Though, as I said last week, some people want to stop us from laughing, say we are Christians. But God made us to be interactive beings. But we must submit ourselves to him. That he can endure, that we can endure by him. He can endure with his specific ability he has chosen for us. In other words, what I'm saying. God made us with abilities. But you have to hear from him. What is your specific ability? What is your spe specific ability? Because you have three children, but all of them are not the same. And you may be hurting yourself and you hurt your child to force all three of them 
to be doctors. How you force all of them to be shoemakers. God distributes abilities. Point them to Jesus Christ. Help them to encourage, encourage them to walk with Jesus. And all the children are not going to be the same. All the kids are not going to be the same. So be careful how you get in it. Direct them to Jesus Christ. Direct them to Jesus Christ. And direct them, well, I tell you more as I go along. I'll, I'll tell you more. But you, you want to find out what is specifically your task and what you must do. What is your ability? Let's read. Turn to Isaiah 11. Two and three. Isaiah chapter 11, two and three. This is very serious, friends. Let's read it. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit, now look, look what I'm saying, what we're saying. God has distributed abilities by the spirit. All of us are aware of that. Some of the abilities are called gifts of the spirit. They are the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes nor decide by the hearing of the ear. What we are saying that when God made man, he also gives the Holy Spirit and he creates abilities. He creates abilities. And, and we, ought to, we ought to begin to confirm what we have Amen. rather than condemn people for what they don't have. Amen. You know, the, you know the, the, the talents were given and distributed. There are gifts of the spirit. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, courage, knowledge, Respect and reverence. God has distributed this to us. And we must find out where we stand with God and the fellow men in regard to these talents. Every man is born with a certain potential that needs to be developed for appropriate use. Every one of you children, every one of you adults, we are born with potential. Potential ability within us. But you have got to be able to realize your potential. It called, it's called appropriateness. You, have poten you can have potential for this, but you are doing that. Not appropriate. Potential for this, and you do this. God's Holy Spirit is able to equip us. And, and, and it's good. Well, you, you, many of us adults know. Some of us are changing our, our career. You're this, you're a teacher for five, ten years. And then you change your career. Because you're not so satisfied. You're not really fulfilling as you feel. You don't feel right. But you change because then you discover your potential is in another direction. Some of us have potential for one or two or three. God knows. That's why we have to keep in touch with Jesus Christ. And so, my friends, the school 
helps us. Well, 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 let me tell you. There are two agencies that God has provided to help man to realize his potential. Listen carefully. There are two agencies that God has provided for you to help, to help you to realize your potential. Two agencies. We're going to look at, can you tell me what are the agencies? Can you tell me what, what agencies that can help you to realize the potential? Think for a minute. Anybody? Education or the church or the school and the church. You know, my friends, some people ignore the church in realizing your potential. The church brings people together and in their interaction, you realize what is your potential. You are among people and you see the needs of people. And God directs you to meet those needs. Amen. You have a potential, but the potential has got to be realized. And God's Holy Spirit can direct you. Yes. And the school. The school is very important. The school, let me say it. The church points out your potential. Yes. And the school provides the curriculum. School helps you to find out what to do. But the church helps you to find out what you can do. That's why every smart family, every smart family encourages their loved one, their members of the family to go to school and to go to church. If you have never directed, look, let me tell you something, friends. You see those people who are leaving their children in bed and come to church? Well, you have to. Well, I don't think you're so right, you know. I don't think you're so right to leave your pretty child. Your who oh, said he needs she needs to rest. Needs to rest. You are turning your back upon one agency that God uses to point out the child's potential. There is great, there, there is joy, there is happiness in. When you watch these young people interacting together, it depends on what approach you take to watching them. Because do you know that they are displaying, they are this questioning, they are displaying their possible potential as they share with one another. The church brings them together. If there was no church, they would not be together. Where would they discover that kind of situation? So there is good in the interaction. So sometimes they make a little trouble. Smart people. Smart families. Encourage their loved ones. To make use of the opportunity. To go to school and church. Young people. Your parents are not wrong. In trying hard to get you to go to church. Where are you going to get the education? That kind of education from? Outside of the church. Who are you going to meet? Where are you going to meet them? You're going to be meeting those who are outside. Are searching for themselves. To find themselves. Go to church. God provides you. God opens up. Your ability by interacting with each other. Jesus went up into a mountain and the disciples came to him. 
Jesus went up into the mountain. And he did not call the disciples up on the mountain. The disciples went to him. And Jesus interpreted their coming to him as, as saying, I need your direction. And Jesus opened his mouth and he taught them saying, taught them. In other words, he gave them education. Saying, and that education directed them to cling together and to be servants of his. And so there is great significance. There is great importance in what we are doing all these 25 years. More than what you see. For 25 years, CBC continues to be committed to God to learn and share the abilities of people. And so friends, as I've said, the church is not just simple. You know, you just come to church and sing and sing and talk together and go back home. And church is more than that. Church gives you an opportunity to learn from people. Learn from people. When you think of the church like this, it brings together several abilities. What's the ability of you all? Well, you know, we, we wouldn't take time. We, we don't have the time. But if we were to ask you, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Where else can you get the chance to meet people who do all of what we do? When you rub shoulders with each other. My friends, come to church. Young people, go to church. You don't have to have a new frock every Sunday. Wash it on Wednesday. Iron it on Friday. And wear it on Sunday. Uh, no, Mama, I wear this one last week. Wear it again this week. And whoever said, you know, the way that trapped the last week. Forgive them on the grounds of ignorance. It's important. Matthew 5, verses 1 to 6. Read Matthew 5, 1 and 16. Matthew 5. Seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain and when he was seated his disciples came to him his disciples came to him go to school go to school go to church practice what Jesus Christ has enabled you to do you may not be acquired maybe not be achieving you're specific. You're not very happy in what you're doing. Once, for, as once you don't succeed, try, try, try again. There are a whole heap of careers. One of them is yours. And parents, you must have tolerance with the children in discovering their potential. And discovering and develop their potential. They don't all have the same mind and, and operate on the same level at the same time. Take time with them. But take time, take time, take time until they discover and develop their abilities. And so... For these years, we have been availing ourselves the opportunity that God can reveal to us what we ought to do so that we might help people to develop their abilities. Now let me go on to attitude. My friends, ability is very significant. Ability 
is very significant because it's a kind of instrument, instrument in your association, instrument. You have to find out what is your role to play. But our achievements cannot be attained without a realization of the fulfillment of our personal responsibility. You can't, we can't assess people's achievement without their own understanding of their part in what they were trying to do. In other words, friends, there is a condition to all of us. There is a condition to all of us in your achievement. Whatever you want to achieve, you have got to put a, a, a little word before your achievement. What's the little word? You find your ability. Yes, your ability is this, that. What's the condition you have got to fulfill? Anybody, tell me. It's a little word. Just two letters. All right, let's see. You like IT. You like the IT. You like the IT. Uh, uh, technical you, you, the development put you in, in, in touch with the technical resources and so on. That's good. You like it. It's a little word. IQ, IQ is a part of the ability. It's a Nobody. Huh? Me. <laughs> Try again. The little word is if. 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 You like IT, but if you go to school. If you learn, if you commit yourself, then you are a way to achieving your goal. If you have to fulfill your own responsibility. If you're going to achieve it, you've got to fulfill your responsibility. And I would wish that our young people and adults and so on would understand. If God appeared to Solomon by night in response to his prayer for Israel, Israel's deliverance from sin, the consequence of sin. Israel was sinning. God appeared to Solomon. He said, look, your people are sinning. And God said, God responded by saying, I heard you, Solomon. Turn to the passage. First, Second Chronicles 7 and verse 12. Second Chronicles 7. Hold, hold it. God responded to Solomon. You prayed, I hear you, Solomon. And God introduced the condition. God introduced the condition. Now let's read. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Verse 14. If, 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 if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then, then, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins. 
Man has a condition to fulfill for the blessing of the Almighty God. Young people, you have a condition to fulfill for the blessing of God upon your life. You have to pray. You have to do all these things. Humble yourself. That means don't be fussy. Don't, don't stop fight. That's cool. Be cool. Always commune with God. Seek his face. And turn from evil ways. Turn from some, some of your mates. Some of your, your, your mates. You have to turn off the, 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 the iPad sometimes. Turn off the iPad. And turn to God. Sometimes the iPad is good, but sometimes it's bad. And if you're too much in the iPad, it's bad. Because you must relate with people and not just relate with iPad. Related people. Related people. And parents and loved ones must guide children on who understand. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the parents don't have any time to just throw the iPad give them. That's good and bad. You're saving yourself, but you're hurting them. You won't feel it now. But you'll feel it later. God responded to Solomon. He said, I've heard your prayer. But if you are to achieve blessings from God, if you're going to achieve blessing, you, they have to fulfill their responsibility. They have something to do. Some people say, pray for me, pray for me. And then they expect God to shower down. God is a servant of yours. You have got to fulfill your responsibility. God shower down, but you don't. Your bucket must have bottom to hold it. Water. That means you have to be sustained by the presence of the Holy Spirit. For God to show. He says, not that God has not been here. Not God. It is not that God is not here. Hearing your prayer is not that God is not showing down, but you can't contain what God is giving to you because you're not in touch with him. It's important, friends. And so, man is controlled. Man controls his attitude. Man controls his attitude. Remember I said, God controls ability. But you control attitude, your reaction, the nature of your reaction, the nature of your reaction to your teachers, the nature of your reaction to your parents, the nature of your reaction to the pastor, the nature of reaction to your teachers in, in, in Christ's way, uh, Christian life, the nature of your reaction. Because every one of them indicates your reaction. And your parents and others' reaction. Because sometimes it's the parents, the bigger people's reaction that hurts the children's reaction. Because we think that we are, if we are seniors, everything we do is not right. Some of, it is, some, some of our seniors' reaction is junior reaction. It's very significant. Man is in control of his own attitude. Attitude means settled way of thinking. You decide how you think. God gives you the ability to think and you decide how you think. Only God knows. Otherwise, only God knows the kind of person that you will be in terms of your reaction. Reaction to your parents, reaction to others. Remember, friends, your, you control your attitude. You control your attitude. God gives you ability, but you can't realize your ability because your 
attitude is not correct. Attitude of rejection when people select to help you. Only God knows and can determine your personal attitude what's going to be. But God is hoping that you will control your attitude. A man reaps what he sows. The Bible says a man reaps what he sows. And whatever attitude you sow, you're going to reap it. Whatever attitude you sow, you're going to reap it. And sometimes you don't display the attitude in public. In, 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 or shall I say? You display your attitude in public. Sometimes you display your attitude in private. But a man reaps what he sows. Galatians 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that, so, that shall he also reap. I told you many times that sometimes it's the blessing of your parents, blessing of older ones that cause you to achieve anything today. It's not your education, your beauty, your scholasticism and all that. It is you, the parents and older people's attitude has rubbed off. God is pleased. So you have to be very careful. Be careful of your reaction to your parents, to your, to your older ones, and so on, because you will reap what you sow. When the time came for the assessment, after this, back to the story now, Matthew, when the time came after distribution of talents and so on and so forth. A time came for assessment and distribution of rewards. A time came going to distribute rewards. Everyone was shocked to realize the part attitude played in Jesus' determination. I'm going to, it's paid, paying time. And you're going to see what God, what Jesus Christ is going to do. Okay? Jesus called them. Called them. And this one speaks about, oh, I've gained five. Good. Other one said, I've gained two. Great ability. You have the great, tremendous ability. And then the other one turned to Jesus and said, you're partial. You gave me one. You're partial. When he said to Jesus, you're partial, it was a display of his bad attitude. My friends, Jesus does not give, a, give reward based on education, ability. Jesus gives reward based on attitude. Jesus exemplified attitude, which is a state of mind. The intellect, the mind as being more effective than skill. How you do what you do is more effective than what you do. Attitude may be selfish, may only be directed towards you and your family. Attitude. Jesus pays attention to attitude. If you sing, If you speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am giving sound not necessarily effective. You can sing. But what about your attitude? 
When you sit down there, when people sit down there and you are up here singing, some people I know you and they're assessing your attitude and they're not hearing your song. Attitude. It's very important. Very important. Jesus exemplified. If I though I speak with the tongues of men of angels and don't have love, love is attitude. And that must come forth. First Corinthians 12, 13 and verse 1. The, the one who received $1,000 had an emotional response to the owner's method of distribution. He's looking at how the owner distributes what he does. That's not his business to look and assess how the owner, the owner's method of distribution. It is his time to Account for your own personal behavior. Don't worry about the boss. Worry about yourself now. He was not treated. You know, my friend, some of us want to be number one. We all want, we, some of us wish to be number one at all times. At all times, we must be number one. Some people are like that. He conceived in his heart and indicated in his action that he had, that Jesus was partial. When God called you, God equips you, fulfill his will according to his account, his job for you and just do what he asked you to do. My last statement. My friends, thank God, thank him for ability, capabilities. All of you have capabilities. Everyone, God has not made any man without a capability. Be motivated by a positive attitude. Doesn't matter what ability, be motivated by a positive attitude. We are a blessing and God intends to be a blessing. As his servants, it may not appear to be, but your simple life, your quiet attendance, your quiet sharing what is effective because your attitude is right. May God bless us and realize that the importance of attitude but the greater importance of the greater in, the, your, the importance of ability but realize that there is a greater a greater source a greater blessing awaiting you depending on your attitude. God bless you. Thank you.